Uh, welcome back. In this video, I'm going to pick up where I left off in that last one, where I had just pulled these samples out of the form, take a look at them, and I left them to let them cure some more. Now, this is the, they are completely dry now. This is that 25% mixture sample. And actually, I'm pretty impressed with this one here. It seems to have good structure, and it's nice and solid. I can scratch the surface maybe a little bit, but it's holding together pretty good. And this one is a 33% one. And this is, you know, a little bit more solid. You know, these will hold up, I think, pretty good for building something out of. And I did go back and I did one more 20% mixture, and that's this one here. And this is the way this one turned out. And it's similar to that other one I did. It's a little bit more crumbly. I think I could just sit here and I could probably pick it apart. It's just not quite enough binder. Kind of reminds me of that uh, white beaded styrofoam board you would get. I can rub some of it away. It, there's just not quite enough binder in there to suit me. But the 25% seems to be all right. And the next step I was going to do with the samples was to put this infrared heat reflector coating on here. And I'm going to mix some of this up and I'll coat these two. And then I'll test these after they dry with this coating on them to see how they'll hold up against heat. I got a big propane torch I'll put on these and then I can see what it does with heat. So I'll get to mixing this up now. While I have the camera close, I'll show a close-up of what the texture of this ceramic fiber board is like. You can see it there. It's kind of like layered. You know, you can pull it apart. It doesn't have a whole lot of strength. You can see I can, I can just break it apart. And the two-inch stuff is the same stuff, but when it's that thick, it holds together a little bit. But, I, you know, I can, I can peel that apart, too. But it's very good for insulating at high temperatures. Now I'll start mixing up this infrared heat reflector coating I got. Mr. Volcano, I guess, is some type of a forge. This is supposed to increase the efficiency up to 50% because it reflects that uh, infrared heat. And it says to mix two parts of the coating with one part water. So I'll measure that with a tablespoon in a little container and then I'm going to apply it to these samples. I'll just start with a little bit. Kind of like a clay. Got a little stink to it, too. Yeah, that should be good. up and so it looks like I think it's going to take a little bit of mixing here the consistency is kind of like a milk or a cream so I'm gonna have to put this on with a brush this is the first time I ever used this so everything is new to me too I was looking at this Sample here though, I think I'm going to do this side. This was the top, and this was the side that was against the plastic. It's got a little, a lot of little pockets, and I don't want to have to fill them up with that. So, this is a little bit smoother on this side. So, I'm going to brush it on that side. I'm going 
if it does get down in those pockets, fill them up, I guess. I think what I should do is let this dry and then put another coating on it, I think. Well, that was two tablespoons of that stuff. And it doesn't say anything about drying time, but I think I'll be able to tell just by the look of it. Yeah, I think I should let it dry and then put another coat on it because I did fill most of these pockets up. Then the next coat will smoothen it out a little bit more. In order to have something to compare to, I want to test how the ceramic fiber board handles the heat, how much can penetrate through it. So I'll take some readings on this. On the front there, there are about 1300. 1350 degrees around there. I'm going to check the back side. I painted it black so I could get a good reading on the meter. Um, 2837. So that's about what we're getting. I thought it on here. Oh, I can feel it's a little bit warm. It's not bad. I had it on in maybe 10 minutes. 130s, 129, I guess it depends. 140, 147. It's, it's still warming up a little bit. <clears throat> 160 in some spots. Well, that'll give me a good indication how the samples will compare. I guess this is still going up 100. And yeah, it's getting warm. The first sample I want to give a heat test to is that second 20% one that I made and it doesn't have any infrared coating on it. And I sprayed some black paint on the back so I can get an accurate reading. So I'll fire this one up and see what happens. I'll let that go for a while now. Well, I have this one blasting away for about 10 minutes now. We'll take some readings on it. Feels like it's starting to get a little bit warm on the back, so we'll take some readings. Uh, 104, 105, 109, I guess it all depends. 110. We'll check the front over here. Thirteen twenty, thirteen fifty. 13, So I think it's working similar to that uh, ceramic fiber board. Now I'm going to go get one that has the infrared reflective coating on it. That's the one I'm really curious about. So this is my 30% mixture sample, well 33 and a third percent. And I'll, it's been a little over five minutes, but I just wanted to check it and see what was happening. Um, 87, 80, around there. Check the front. Yeah, 
Uh, looks like it's taken longer to heat up. So it must be reflecting the heat some. I think I got the torch on about the same. I think it's about the same. I guess that's probably a determining factor if I don't have the flame up the same. I can turn it up a little bit long. Come back and check it again a little bit. Well, this one's been getting torched for a good 15 minutes now. I'll take another reading. 38. Five. Close to 140. There is something. 140 Turn the Turn it up a little bit more <laughs> Well, this one has been getting blasted for a good 20 minutes. I'll take some more readings on it. And temperature up to 163. This is the 33 and a third percent mixture. And take a look at back here. This is the one with the infrared reflective coating on it. I guess it doesn't seem like the this surface is getting as hot as the other ones. So this is how this one's working. This is the 33 and a third percent refractory cement one. side here. I think my flame is getting a little lower now. I think I'm running out of gas, I think. Well, this is my 25 percenter, but I don't think I'm going to get an accurate test on this one because I'm running out of gas. Got this moved up close. It's been about five minutes and I can take a reading, but I don't think I don't have any more gas. Let's see. 84. 83. 84. Yeah, just not. My flame is dying. So. Yeah. It's it's hard to compare with this with the other ones because my flame is dying. The it doesn't seem like these surfaces on the flame side are getting quite as hot. That's it. I'm out of gas. So so I'm not going to get a good accurate test like I did the other one. The other one I had on there, that 33 percent I had on there for 20 minutes, so I don't got a really a good blasting. And it seems like the re infrared reflective surface that the flame was hitting, it wasn't getting quite as hot as the other one. Yeah, it just feels a little bit warm, but Anyway, that's probably about the temperature of a wood fire, maybe. A standard wood fire. 
my wood fires are usually up around 13, 1200 degrees, 13, 1500 degrees. This is only about 800 over here because I just the flame is dying out. Unfortunately, I ran out of propane before I could get a good heat test on this one. But these other two samples did get a good blasting of heat, so I think I got a good comparison with this uh, ceramic fiber board. I never tested this ceramic fiber board like that before. And after the test, I think realistically, this 20% sample has uh, similar insulation properties as the ceramic fiber board. But you have to keep in mind that this is an inch and a half thick, and this is one inch. But the structure, though, of this one is weaker, I think, because it's so crumbly. This is pretty tough. If I drop this down, it would probably break in pieces. But this is pretty tough. If you can pick it apart, and it's a little bit flexible, but it's pretty tough, too. This stuff, you know, I, I can pick it apart. It's a little too crumbly. There's not enough binder in here. One thing I would do different, giving it second thought, is when I made these samples, I would have compacted it down more so it got rid of some of those air pockets and everything had been tighter together. I noticed when I was testing this with the heat that some of these perlite kernels and beads were popping off. We got a few of them popped off. I think it's because there was air pockets in here and when that air heated it just popped these little beads off, these perlite beads off. You know, I can still pick some of these beads off because there's not enough binder in here. I didn't compact these other samples down, but they're a little bit denser because of the heavier mix and that coating did protect it some. But I think I would have compacted them down too. I think the surface would have been more smooth when it came time to apply the coating. And I do think that coating did reflect some heat, so I think that was a, a better thing. But I think if I would have compacted this down more, the surface would have been smoother and I could have gotten by with just one coating. And in comparing these two samples, the 33% and the 25%, the 25% is more than adequate you know, for structure. This one, you know, it's a lot more denser, I, stronger, but I don't think it would be required. I think the 25% would work all right. And, of course, if you wanted more insulation, you can just make these thicker. They're all an inch and a half thick, and they're all 10 inches by 12 inches. And I calculated what it cost to make one sample, and it ended up being $5 to make this with the coating. This coating is now $27 for this jar. I bought it, you know, I think about a year ago, it was like $20. And this castable refractory cement is now $39, where I was buying it for $28 a few years ago. If you're considering on building an insulated burn chamber, this stuff would probably be your first choice if you wanted to spend the money on it. But if not, I think this stuff will work pretty darn good. It's just going to be a little more work to do it. So I hope these experiments and tests can help you decide how you'd like to go about doing that. So thanks for watching.